Imagine the biggest structure you can think of. You might be thinking of the Burj Khalifa or even the International Space Station, but this structure is bigger than both of them. It's so big, with arms up to 4 kilometers long, that it's able to observe some of the quietest events in the universe, gravitational waves. That's right, it's called LIGO, or the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. While LIGO has served us well till now, it constantly needs to be upgraded every couple of years. But what if there was a detector here in Australia? To understand the consequences of the idea of building a gravitational wave detector, it's important to first understand the history of gravitational waves. The idea first arose more than a hundred years ago with Einstein's theory of general relativity. In this theory, Einstein states that space and time are interconnected in one medium called space-time, and that because this space-time bends in the presence of massive objects such as the sun, we experience gravity. Not only can this space-time fabric bend, but objects orbiting each other in this space-time fabric can produce waves in the continuum, which we call gravitational waves. For over a hundred years, gravitational waves were never detected because of the fact that even with large enough masses, the resultant wave would still be super weak. In other words, our instruments weren't sensitive enough. But in early 2016, the LIGO team in the USA detected gravitational waves for the first time. The merging of two black holes into one. How did they do that? Well, when gravitational waves pass through an object, say through the Earth, then what happens is that the object first gets stretched in one direction and then it gets stretched in the perpendicular direction. So the aim of any gravitational wave detector is to measure this stretching and squishing effect as the change in length of something. In this case, they use 4km arms, both of which are perpendicular to each other and have light passing back and forth each of these perpendicular parts. Since we know light travels at a constant speed, 299,792,458 meters per second, we can use the time it takes light to travel in each tunnel to measure the stretching and squishing effects. Moreover, since we also know that light can interfere with itself, just as water waves can interfere with each other in a pond, we can confirm a stretching and squishing effect through the interference pattern the light wave makes when it interferes with the other light wave from the perpendicular tunnel. Through this interference pattern and process of elimination from errors, gravitational waves were discovered. Since then, LIGO has expanded into the LIGO Virgo Cargra collaboration, with multiple detectors located in the USA, Europe, and even in Japan, all detecting gravitational waves. For quite some time, despite Australia having no detectors of its own, the Australian Research Council Centre of Excellence for Gravitational Wave Discovery, also known as OSGRAV, has been a leading organisation in the area of gravitational wave research. However, as upgrades continue across various existing detectors, and the next generation gravitational wave detectors are in the works, Researchers in Australia are considering whether to build a next-generation detector here in Australia. One such idea is NEMO, also known as the Neutron Star Extreme Matter Observatory, a possible next-generation detector that could be built in Australia. Fun fact, I actually got to design the current logo of NEMO. But why bother? Well, there are actually a variety of different reasons of a potential NEMO in Australia. Number one. NEMO is a proof of concept. If NEMO is built, then NEMO will be using the same technologies that will be used in much bigger and more advanced gravitational wave detectors, which will be operational in the late 2030s. By building such a detector, NEMO can draw attention to both the advantages, potential disadvantages, and other potential obstacles with these new technologies. Number two. Nemo's goal is different from the rest. As you can tell with the name, Nemo is going to be focusing on neutron stars and trying to understand extreme matter states through gravitational waves. Number three, 
Nemo can be built way faster. Nemo won't be dealing with low frequency detections like its more advanced counterparts will do in the late 2030s. Instead, it will only be focusing on high frequency detections, which will significantly bring down costs and will also require less time to build. Because of this, Nemo could be operational years earlier than the other advanced detectors and can contribute a lot to the scientific community. And number four, good old national pride. If you thought LIGO and NEMO are crazy, just wait till you hear about future gravitational wave detectors. Some span more than 10 kilometers and others the entire solar system and beyond. But other alien civilizations could have already made solar system wide structures and more. To learn more about aliens more advanced than us, just click the video you see on your screen. Goodbye.